Time for another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Mike Fenner, and we're here for week number nine of the high school football regular season here in District 10. I'm Ashley Kaiser, and we've got a great slate of games tonight, leading off with a big one in Region 6 here in the city. It's Cathedral Prep home for the Erie Royals at Dollinger Field. 14 to nothing. Prep leads after the first here. Luke Costello calls his own number with his eight yard run for a score. At halftime, Prep leads 31 to nothing. As we're into the third quarter now, Costello fires it to number two, Hollingsworth. That'll be a 27 yard touchdown run for the Ramblers. And the kick on this one is good, making it 38 to nothing prep. As we head into the fourth quarter, the Royals get on the board here. Darnell passes to number 28, True Fraser. It's 38 to eight now, prep still leading. But that's all that Erie would get as Cathedral Prep beats Erie 38 to eight. We just came out. Uh, we want to be really aggressive. Uh, they're really good on uh, their special teams. They've had, they've, I think, returned six kicks for touchdowns on kickoff return. Uh, so we want to neutralize that. We found a way to keep the ball out of their playmakers' hands on that. And then on both sides of the line of scrimmage, I thought we controlled the line of, line of scrimmage and, and did a great job uh, controlling that. Like I said, it's it's all in the locker room. We have to have a mindset that going into the second half, that it's you know still a close game, even even though we did get up to a big league in, lead in the first half. But um, yeah, we had a good mindset coming out in the second half we wanted to get some of the kids that don't normally play in there and we did that and I'm, I'm really proud of this team we play more physical than them I could tell you that uh, you know we were ready to come out and uh, teamwork we we you know we work on teamwork and positivity uh, we stay focused just thinking you know like they can't come back it's zero zero like we still can run up the scoreboard that's what we think every time we're up by a lot on the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, Cathedral Prep takes down Erie High at home by a final score of 38-8. All right, let's go to Gus Anderson Field. Region 6 action between Brad Orlando's McDowell Trojans and Butler. Scoreless in the first here after a touchdown was taken off the board by penalty. McDowell getting one back. Blaze Myers rolls and throws. Finds Jackson Johns for the Trojan TD pass. Five-yard score. Call it 7-0 for the guys in blue. Next drive, Myers. Throws into the flat, Damar Dickerson takes off down the sideline. That's a first down pickup as he makes some would-be tacklers miss. And then later in this drive, Meyer's going to hand it off to Stefan Baby Porter. Makes his way into the end zone from four yards out. 14-0 Trojans as they extend the lead. Butler with the football now here later. It's Dominic Baraducci with the easy interception. Trojans in business offensively. That'll lead to this. It'll be Myers up top, out of the gun, firing downfield for Leo Whitaker. 31-yard touchdown in stride, 21-0 in a heartbeat. Region 6 champion McDowell goes on to get the win, 52-12 at home over the Golden Tornado. Now for Union City as they meet Mercyhurst Prep at Saxon Stadium. First and 10 on the 40, number 6, Jason Elman takes off as he fights his way through the Bears' defense. 40-yard touchdown for Mercyhurst Prep. Lakers strike first. It'll be six to nothing. Hurst in the first with 11:25 left. First and ten on the 48. Paul Johnson's pass hits the ground and bears Jacob Skinnels recovers it with a big rush for Union City all the way down to the nine-yard line. Now that leads to this kick here from Leonard Stephen. The Bears are on the board now. Six-three Lakers. Number four, Jeremy Ganska pulls to the Lakers sideline and takes off 55 yards for Mercy Hurst for a touchdown. That one makes it 12 to three, Mercy Hurst. Lakers handoff here, ball bounces and Elman recovers it just like they drew it up. Hurst gets the extra two. Mercy Hurst prep tops Union City 48 to three, staying undefeated and winning a Region Two championship. Absolutely, let's go to Corey High School where the Beavers are playing host to county rival Fort LaBeouf. Jay Pushkar on this one for us at Sheen Field. Pick things up late in a scoreless first quarter. Bison with a football, but not for long. They go to Ryan Welka on the ground. Picks up tough yards before Austin Barr flies in and jars it loose. Fumble that the Beavers recover. Later, two plays later to be exact. Corey on the scoreboard now. What a catch on the throw from Nolan Carey to Rylan Smith. Gorgeous one-handed grab for the 31-yard touchdown. Beavers leading 7-0 after one. Midway through the second, Fort LaBeouf bringing the rush. Jack Stangle coming up with the sack, and it stayed 7-0 Corey into the half. Same score in the third, Bison in the red zone. They stay on the ground, quarterback keeper here, but Connor McChesney has the ball stripped, and it's Austin Barr once again. What a night it was for number 11 as Gabe Scouten would scoop up the ball for the home team. On the ensuing drive, Corey going to march down the field, and eventually it's Carey calling his own number for the touchdown. 14-0 Beavers. LaBeouf would score once more in this one. 
I should say they scored once on the night. A final of 14 to 7. Corey goes on to get the win over the Bison at home. Let's go to Linden Field. It's Gerard visiting General McLean tonight. Pink out jerseys for the Lancers. Those are sweet. 21 7. McLean in the second. Run up the middle here for Magnus Lloyd. First down, GM. Then later in the possession, it'll be a brotherly connection here. Quarterback Isaac Zeitz throws one down the left sideline. Jacob Zeitz with a General McLean touchdown to the front pylon. Count it. 28 7. Lancers. Yellow Jackets with the football here. Next drive, Ryan St. Julian. Intercepted by TJ Berger. And he's got big plans for this one. That'll be a pick six house call. General McLean goes on to get the home win by a final of 49. 14. Now we got Harbor Creek Coasting wheeling Central Catholic as we start here in the first. Heath Benza hands it off to number 26 Tyshawn Jones. A huge rush for the Huskies here. 78 yard touchdown run from Jones and the kick on this one's good making it 7 to nothing Harbor Creek. And the Maroon Knights, they have the ball in this next one. Number 25, Braden McGreeth with the 17-yard carry for a score. And that touchdown running kick for Wheeling ties the game at 7. Benza here fires it down the field to C.J. Pius. Nice pass, 61-yard pass complete for a Huskies first down. Benza here again with the pass intended for Ben Landis, but... Caleb Golden beats him to it as he intercepts in the end zone for a touchback. End of the first quarter, McGreeth goes long. 37-yard touchdown pass for the Knights. And the kick is good. 14-7 Central. Harbor Creek falls to 49, falls 49 to 22. West Virginia's wheeling Central Catholic. To Bender Field as Meadville and Warren in this region four matchup here. First possession of the game. Dragons quarterback Eric Dibble. Gets flushed out of the pocket, rolls out and airs a deep ball, gets tipped and right to the hands of Ryan Reichel as he returns it to the Dragons territory. Plus he gets this unnecessary roughness as the Bulldogs now wouldn't take long to capitalize. Brain Miller takes the pitch 13 yards into the end zone. Meadville up 6 to nothing. Meadville's next possession is Brighton Anderson on the end round, making a few people miss. And it's off to the races, 47 yards for the touchdown, calling out 13 to nothing. Meadville blanks Warren, 53 to nothing, winning Region 4. Outstanding stuff there for the home team there. To Carter Field we go in Titusville, Oil City visiting tonight against the Rockets. To the start of the third, Oilers leading 22 to 6. Ethan Knox gets the football, cuts back, and he's going to run this one about 58 yards inside the red zone. A few plays later, it'll be Knox again scoring from three yards out here. One of his four touchdowns to go along with nearly 350 yards rushing. He, of course, became the all-time leader in rushing in District 10 history a week ago. Rockets responding, though, on the home field. It'll be Jackson Covell getting the football and following his blocks. And down the right side, it's just all about execution here. 51 yards to the land of six. But the final in this one, Oil City beats Titusville in that one, 38 to 12 in oil country. Let's go to uh, District 10 local high school football scores from around the area elsewhere on Friday night. Camber Springs winning at Mercer 22 to eight. The Blue Devils in Lakeview share the region one crown as the Sailors top Reynolds 37 to nothing. Franklin beats Kania 27-14. Sagertown over Kennedy Catholic by a 48 nothing final. And Cochranton one point better than Maplewood as well. A couple games coming up on Saturday locally in high school football in week number nine. Northeast visits Fairview at one o'clock. Northwestern visiting Seneca at two. And Mercer County Hickory is at Sharpsville at seven while Farrell is at Slippery Rock at seven o'clock as well. Still to come on Friday Night Lights, the Otters met up with their most hated rival, the London Knights. That and more is coming up next on Friday Night Lights.